the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ has revealed more regarding the altar of Damascus, the capital city of Syria, and the war, the little horn, and what is happening. And extremely exciting, this will expose the way uh, what the Holy Spirit is exposing right now. Purpose Plan War in Syria. This report was written 1st of September in 2014. This report was published. So, in Isaiah, beginning here, Syria and Ephraim, we have two altars here. And we have the, the Assyrian altar that is in the White House, Washington, D.C. That's the altar of Damascus. That is very likely the same altar of Nineveh. Actually, it is. I'll prove that here. And then you have Ephraim, that is Israel, with the son of Remaliah. That's the king, Pekah. He was a, he was a bad king. And so this is the altar of Samaria. Have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah. That's the first covenant tabernacle. The first covenant. The tabernacle of Moses. Okay? First covenant tabernacle. And vex it. Also terrorize it. And let us make a breach. So now we're in the second covenant. So this is happening to both covenants. Okay? So you have uh, Baal... The Holy Spirit reveals first covenant, Baal Zebub, that was the first covenant of Moses, and now in this spiritual covenant of Jesus Christ, his name is also Beal, B L, be a God, be Baal, take all the covenant, and be all, be L rather, L means God, God, the gods. Now, it says here. And let us make a breach, invade it, and that is, this here is, is what's called fragmentation in this covenant of the brain and possession of the soul, if possible, because we are the temple of God. They're in for us and set a king, who's the king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabial. Well, when I saw this, just now, the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ revealed that's Lucifer, Satan, the devil. That's who that is. So I said, I don't even have to look in concordance, but I am going to look in the concordance. But actually, I'll just go in the Holman Bible Dictionary and see it there. I don't have to go in the concordance. I know what this means. I mean, obviously, there's going to be more meanings, but ultimately, this is Lucifer, Satan, the devil. Let's put Lucifer on the throne. And that's why they have the Dome of the Rock. So I look at... at uh, at the word tab tabial, and I couldn't find it, but what came up was tabial. Instead of tabial, I got here in this Holman Bible Dictionary, tabial, and that's Second Covenant Lucifer. And it says here, God is good. Aramaic personal name meaning God is good. So God is great. That's what this means. So what religion says God is great? Alu uh, 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 what, what what how do they um, Allah Akbar Alua Akbar Alua Akbar whatever they say, God is great. You see, this is the Muslim religion. The Muslim religion here. So what the Holy Spirit Jesus Christ revealed to me is that Ephraim. That is the son of Remaliah. This is the altar of Samaria in Washington, D.C. They made an agreement. They, they, they told Bashar Assad, we're going to give you the Golan Heights. We're going to give you Jerusalem. Just, we'll do it. And so they've been doing this their way. And um, Bashar Assad is living in a cage 
he was. Now he's, he's, he's out because Russia has opened her gates, as the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ revealed to me approximately four days ago. He spoke the word, Russia has opened her gates, or, or when Russia opens her gates. Well, she's already opening up her gates. And the reason why she's opening up her gates is because they also want to liberate their people from all the sanctions. And that's what opening the gates is all about. And the gates are military. Military gates. And when they start throwing bombs in the U.S. and the economy falls and America declares bankruptcy and uh, before that happens, more than likely, um, it could be this year, during martial law, uh, occupation, major disasters, and there's going to be just no help. There's no money to do anything. Um, and then, then, then the nuclear, and then the, the missiles are going to start flying. And uh, we also will be released. Not that it's a good thing, uh, how it's being done. However, um, There is, there, God will bring a freedom, a sense of freedom, in the midst of that time of absolute destruction. Because Syria with Ephraim and the son of Remaliah has devised evil against you, saying, let us go up against Judah and terrify it, let us conquer it for ourselves, and set up the son of Tabiel. Here's Tabiel, here's Tabiel here. So, so here you have the two, I just noticed this. Uh, this is the RSV, is Tabil, and we have Tabi Tabaal here in the King James Version. So, um, this is, this report was written once again in 2014, and uh, here what this says is, uh, reason is the head of 666 terrorist cells network gathering. The reason why I wrote that is because... It's, this is happening in his own land against his own people. And so he uh, he's majorly responsible for doing this. So, um, so this report, I just want to go a little bit, um, speaks regarding the revelations uh, that were given in 2014 and near the bottom says here Pika in the concordance what it means is he has opened so this is the altar of Samaria this is the left horn of Lucifer that has opened the Assyrian Edomite king, even of Ephraim, are opening the way to the invasion, conquering even of Judah and Israel of the heavenly Zion spiritual city of Jerusalem. So, the reason why they're doing that, how they're doing that, is they're doing it through uh, being vexed by the devil. Uh, the dome of the rock is 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 Tabil, is Tabaal and Tabail. That's the dome of the rock, and that is the once again um, as found in the website. That is the the sign for the entire world, the symbol that Lucifer is the god of this world temporarily, and the vexation of the Republican Party, for example, is of the devil. They are vexed by the devil. They're 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 the unwise virgins. And John saw it in Revelation. And that's exactly what he saw. He saw these these, these zombie uh, people praying, in, using the name of Jesus Christ, praying, believers praying. They're zombies. They're absolutely absolutely uh, delusional. And and they're opening the way. Um, for the uh, 
the conquering of, of Judah because they're bloodthirsty, period. And now we see that this shedding of blood, we've see, we're, we're seeing what's happening in Israel, it's getting, it's getting worse. This is by the, co the, the covenant children. It's getting even worse. The bloodshed is just, is, is uh, there's no more mercy, there's nothing. It's, it's just bloodshed. It's just carnal. That's not good. Conquering even of Judah and Israel, and that's where it's leading to. That's what the horn is doing in Daniel 11, 5 to 9. There is, it's, a, it's, it, it's the left horn, Lucifer, Satan, and Devil. He's stirring up the winds, and, and he's taken, given victory to the south, and then the north plunders it, then the south reigns, and they get, they get spoiled, they sin. And, and, and it's just over a period of time, once again, as written in this report also, is they get worn out. Satan is weakening the nations, and now we're at the ends of the earth. Um, Pika, Strong's Concordant, um, and uh, Remaliah, the father of Pika, Strong, okay, says Yahweh has a door. And so Pika, okay, came, he came from the tabernacle, he came from the covenants. He came from the covenants. But it's, it's just like what happened to Ephraim, Ephraim was not as good a steward as his father Joseph. And Pekah was very, he was wicked. He went against the covenant. They had altars in Samaria. They weren't supposed to have them there. They worshipped. It was a pagan altar. And they were vexed by the scorching wind of the east. Okay. So, there's another one. Um... So Pika says is also in part is now replaced by the also Edomite Freemason, Freemason, uh, Satan worshiping power to Syrian sword, and so you have these this altar in Washington D.C. It's two altars. You have the altar of Samaria, and you also have the altar once again of Damascus, is the capital of Syria, and that altar I believe is found in, in the mosque there. I forget what it's called. I, I quickly looked at it. That is quite possibly this alt the altar. Now, um, I haven't looked into it. So, once again, here the new world order will not be completely established, and and that's found in Micah 10, seven, ten to thirteen. Also. So I want to get into the new revelations. Uh, the the uh, I will break also the bar of Damascus and cut off the inhabitants from the plain of Avon, and him that holdeth the scepter from the house of Eden, and the people of Syria shall go into captivity unto Ker. And that's all found here. What that what that means. Okay. And the one who urinates on the wall, they're urinating on the, on the, the uh, covenant. That is the, the pure, true religion of Jesus Christ. They were urinating on the wall of Jerusalem, and now it's a, it's a spiritual temple. They're spiritually doing all this against the covenant. And, and the way they do that is by falsely interpreting the Bible and by... Uh, um, you know, just lying and, and, and just uh, continually always attacking and imposing their stagnant, um, dead religion, zombie, dead zombie religion, that doesn't make, uh, makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, no logic in it at all. Uh, so that's the vexation, and that's the end of that. So, what I'd like to speak to uh, regarding is quickly here, um, if I can, in to, I'm going to just read this. Ahaz, little horn, is vexing Israel through the great altar. 
and alter, also ER, means alter personality of Damascus, Syria, to go to war, and there they will be abandoned, plots devised against Israel. So what's happening in 2 Samuel 11, I think 14 and 15, King David, he sent Uriah, so little horn is of King David's seed. And it's very important to understand that. Um, because he's only great towards the south and the east, toward the two covenants, not towards Damascus. And, and see here what the Bible scripture says regarding this. And, and so, um, they send Israel to war just as King David sent Uriah. He was the upright one. He was a good man. Feared God. Good husband. And uh, he, aban he turned his back on Uriah. In 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 uh, the heat of the war, the battle, the war, and Uriah was killed. Okay, that's exactly what they're doing to Israel. That's exactly what they're doing, and that's exactly what um, is going to happen in North America. You notice how every time North America is. Uh, makes a policy against Israel that is not good, like uh, such as dividing the land or whatever, there's always some sort of a calamity that follows, a natural disaster. Well, what's the, going to be the greatest natural disaster is going to be the entire nation. Or at least there's going to... And, and, but there will be uh, pockets, uh, perhaps very small pockets, uh, here and there um, of anointing where God, there's 144,000. Uh, however, that's approximately 1%, that, that is 1% of the population of the world. So, and that's scattered throughout the world. So these times are coming. And uh, it's hard to imagine that. It's hard to believe that. The Bible says that when those 144,000 are cut up, God is going to put His feet on the Mount of Olives. He's going, to, he's going to speak the Word. He's going to speak His holy fire, refining fire. And the entire, all the inhabitants of the earth, they, their tongues will melt, their eyes will melt in their sockets, and the entire earth will be submerged. It will be uh, uh, turned into a fireball. It will be fervent heat. It will melt the entire earth, everything that's on it. So, going, uh, so now, the scriptures here is showing us, so, plots divides against Israel. Uh, and, uh, so, there's going to be plots divides against Israel. North America also will be abandoned, declare bankruptcy in the midst of major calamity, and then the end, the final strike uh, from the whirlwind when Russia opens her gates. And that's already happen, happening now. Russia has opened her gates. It's just beginning to open her gates. Now, the whirlwind. In uh, 2 Chronicles 28, 5, says, Therefore the Lord gave him into the hand of the king of Syria, this is Ahaz, who defeated him and took captive a great number of his people, and brought them to Damascus. This is the whirlwind. They brought brought them to Damascus, and Amos says, uh, "Those who are uh, just like I'm going to read that verse. Um, it's here in in this presentation, in this report. Just as a shepherd takes out part of an ear, you know, from the lion's mouth or a leg, uh, so will it be with the inhabitants of Ephraim." who are laying down in a bed, in a couch, in Damascus. What does that mean? Well, Ahaz was laying in a bed in Damascus also. Okay, and that all these things are happening, but no one is concerned about it. No one cares. Everyone's resting. You know, God's going to rescue us because we're so righteous. You know, it's not going to come near us. The covenant said, 
Uh, we are the flesh, and this city is the cauldron. I mean, look at us. We're prospering. We're doing great. I mean, look at all the stuff that's happening around us. It's not going to touch us. And, of course, they were greatly deceived. In 2 Chronicles 28... Beginning in, I'll go back to this, verse, verses uh, 10, for example, uh, reading out of the King James. Second Chronicles 28.10, and now... Ye purpose to keep under the children of Judah and Jerusalem for bondmen and bondwomen unto you, but are they not with you, even with you, uh, sins against the Lord your God? Okay, so what's happening? So, Israel took Damascus, Pika here. Okay, so what happened is they finally entered into the gates of Judah. I'm going to, do, I'm going to start in 2 Kings and go back here because it's, it's, the sequencing is better. So, well, it doesn't really matter. Um, 2 Kings 16, both ways will work. 2 Kings 16, this is what happened. This is the little horn. When King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tigliath Pileser, king of Assyria, he saw the altar that was at Damascus, and, and King Ahaz sent to Uriah the priest the model the altar in its pattern, and Uriah built the altar in accordance with all the King Ahaz, Ahaz had said from Damascus. So Uriah the priest made it before the King Ahaz arrived at Damascus, and when the king came from Damascus, this is in the previous video, the king viewed the altar, then the king drew near to the altar and went up upon it. He burnt his offering and his cereal offering and poured his drink offering and, and threw the blood of his peace offering upon the altar. And the bronze altar, which was before the Lord, he removed from the front of the house, from, from between his, the altar uh, and the house of the Lord, and put it on the north side of the altar. And that's Assyria. Okay, that's the north side of the altar. And King Ahaz commanded to Uriah the priest, saying, So, um, so Ahaz is vexed with the god of Assyria, uh, Tabiel and Tabiel and Tabiel. And the, the, the uh, scorching wind in the east is all those many demons. So King Haaz commanded Uriah, verse 15, the priest, saying, Upon the great altar, burn the morning offering and the evening and cereal offering. This is the one lamb in the morning, one lamb in the evening. And the king burnt offering, and the king's burnt offering, and his cereal offering, with the burnt offering of all the people of the land. This is happening in in Washington D.C. And throw it upon the blood of the burnt offering, and throw upon it all the blood of the burnt offering, is the souls of the people and the blood of the sacrifice, but the bronze altar shall be for me to inquire by. So he's made himself a god. He's made himself a god. This is the little horn. The little horn is both Pika and Ahaz. That's who the little horn is. And this is going to tell you exactly what's going to happen to the little horn. So, uh, Uriah the priest did all this, and King Ahaz commanded, and King Ahaz cut off the frames of the stands, he removed the labor, so the nations under judgment from them, and he took down the sea from off the bronze oxen that were under it, because that bronze oxen represented the blessings of the nation, and the nation also going out 
to the entire world to minister the gospel. How does he remove the bronze, the, the, the four oxen? Oxen is the spirit that guides the ministry and the twelve tribes of Israel. Okay? That, so that is the, 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 the government city of God that comes down from heaven, Jerusalem, the twelve foundations. How does he remove that in modern day, today? He removes that by vexing the people with demons. That's how he does that. How, did he, how is he doing that to the church? Well, he is the hero. He's the champion of the church. The church is seeing dollar signs. They're smelling money. They're tasting money. Their ears are being scratched. Uh, the administration is going to go and take it by force, take the kingdom by force, kingdom dominion. It's all lies. They're believing in lies. That's how they're being vexed. They're not ministering the true gospel of God. They're not believing the true gospel of God. They're believing in fairy tales. In verse 18, And he covered... And the covered way for the Sabbath, which had been built inside the palace and the outer entrance, and um, for the king, he removed from the house of the Lord because of the king of Assyria. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaz, which he did, is not written in the chronicles of the kings of Judah. And Ahaz slept with his fathers and was buried... Um, with his fathers in the city of David. Hezekiah's son reigned in his steed. In his stead, his steed. So, let's go to Chronicles. In 2 Chronicles. Go to 2 Chronicles. Let's see, Second Chronicles 24, 28 rather. So, in verse 5 is the whirlwind. Okay, and therefore the Lord gave him into the hand of the king of Syria, who defeated him and took captive a great number of his people. So, this is what happens, what happened at the end, and what happened is the altar of Samaria... Uh, it was actually the, um, the, the was, gave gave him up, also, but it was the king of Syria. It was the Assyrians who defeated him and took captive a great number of his people and brought them to Damascus. So there's a great number, and this is in Revelation thirteen eleven. The two horns like a lamb, but speak like a dragon. The five foolish virgins are included here. Now, the reason this is found in Daniel chapter 8 says that uh, the little horn is great only towards the south and the east. He's not, he, he, he is not well renowned in the north. Okay, and this is exactly what's happening here with Donald Trump. It's, it's exactly the same. This is the administration. This is the little horn. You see, that it's exactly the same. That's, and that's what the Holy Spirit has revealed. It's, it's obvious and plain. Now, um, so, what I have here, in 2 Chronicles 10, 16-17, at that time, King Ahaz sent to king, the king of Assyria for help. For the Edomites had again invaded and defeated Judah and carried away captives. And the Philistines had made raids on the city in the Shifala and the Negev of Judah and had taken Beth Shemesh, Ajalon, Gedaroth, Soko with its villages, Timnah with its villages, and Gimzo with its villages, and they settled there. So, he is, King Ahaz conspired, he took the, the great altar, right, and then what did he do? He went to seek refuge 
to the Assyrians. But what happened? Well, they gave him up because he's not he's not the bloodline. He he's not great towards their seed, and he's not liked there. And the Sar Assad said it even in a, during the Obama administration that they're backstabbers. And that's when the covenant was made. He said, you can't trust America. You can't trust them at all. And, and so, um, so here is this exact same, it's the exact same office that's being done right now through the new elected. This the little horn that's been elected just carries out the exact same thing. It's actually, he, he's actually accelerating the, the north. This is the, the, the eighth king. He is actually accelerating um, making things speeding up. He's, he's actually he's the igniter, the fire starter. He's causing the threshing floor to boil over and spew over. Okay, both altars. Both altars. For the Lord brought Judah low because of Ahaz, king of Israel. For he had dealt wantonly in Judah and had been faithless to the Lord. He went to Jerusalem be before at the Wailing Wall, was measured it up, saying, well, how am I going to do this? As if he's saying, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have victory over the fourfold judgment of God. I mean, I'm going to make this thing, I'm going to make the dominoes fall. He had been faithless to the Lord. This is Ahaz. So Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, came against him and afflicted him instead of strengthening him. So instead of supporting him, and this is in this here, it says instead of supporting him. Okay, why? Because it says here, so this is the sword of God, the sword of, of, the, of the north. North and the east is Syrian. No Holy Spirit, no Bible. And verse 21 says, For Ahaz, so instead of strengthening him, the king of Assyria, the Assyria, they afflicted him. They didn't support him, says in the other version. Instead of strengthening him, instead of supporting him. For Ahaz took from the house of the Lord and the house of the king and of the princess and gave tribute to the king of Assyria, but it did not help him. He's selling out America. He's selling out the covenant. Both covenants. In verse 22, in the same time of his distress, he, he, he uh, became yet more faithless to the Lord. It just gets worse, worse, and worse. It says, uh, the scripture says, the physical written word of God, says that through the Holy Spirit, understanding says that uh, let the, in Revelation 22 says, let the wicked continue to be wicked. It's, this is because they're sealed. Let the, the, the righteous continue to be righteous. Let the holy continue to be holy. Let, 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 let the, uh, the filthy continue to be filthy. So, he even got more faithless to the Lord as time went by. He rejected prayer. He had an opportunity to receive the prayer. And then the sealing came. Done. Done. There is no turning back. The Bible prophesies regarding this. There's men that have been ordained in vessels of honor and vessels of wrath since the very beginning of time, and they are now here on the earth living out their destiny, as written in Jude also. 4 and 6. For he sacrificed to the gods of Damascus, which had defeated him, and said, so the Assyrian defeated him, the sword defeated him, he is a warmongerer, and said, because the gods of the kings of Syria helped them, I will sacrifice to them that they may help me, but they were the ruin of him and all of Israel. So those, that's the sword of God that is of Lucifer, and God wants to get rid of that sword. It's his sword. He's taking responsibility. He's going to uh, for it. 
and he, he was ministering to it. It refused everything that God has sown. He says, what else could I have done to my vineyard? He says, There's, I've done it all. And he's plundered it all, and he owns it all. He defeated death. So, uh, because the gods of the kings of Syria helped him, I will sacrifice to them. That was the great altar, the altar of Lucifer, of Nineveh. I will sacrifice to them that they may help me. These are the great Assyrians. But they were the ruin of him and of all Israel. Once again, because of kingdom dominion. They're trusting in the sword of Assyria. Okay. And they has gathered together the vessels of the house of God and cut in pieces the vessels of the house of God. He cut them to pieces. He gathered them together in his election campaign. And then he cut them in pieces. The vessels of the house of God. Human vessels. Jerusalem. And he shut up the doors of the house of the Lord. So there is... That, that, that is the soul, that is this darkening that's coming in because of the lie that they believe. He shut up the doors of the house of the Lord and made himself altars in every corner of Jerusalem. He was great. He came out of the slaughter altar. This is Revelation 13, 2. It's the little horn. He comes out of the four corners of the earth, the four beasts in the vision of Daniel. The, the, the four horses of, the, of Revelation. In every city of Judah he made high places to burn incense to other gods, provoking to anger the Lord, and he's done this also now in Ephraim, both altars. So there's um, also there's um, those that are of Judah, Now the rest of his acts and all his ways, from first to last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and of Israel. And Ahaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city in Jerusalem, for they did not bring him into the tombs of the kings of Israel, and Hezekiah his son reigned in his stead. So he was buried with the kings of Israel, but uh, in, this, in Jerusalem... But they did not bring him into the tombs of the kings of Israel. So he, he, he wasn't at death. Uh, he was not regarded um, as, as, as a great king. Because obviously Judah was slaughtered because of him. Now, so... Um, Now, in 23 to 25, also, in the versions, different versions here, you'll see that speaks regarding, let me see this one, and, 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 and this is what it is, the princess is also women, okay, because princess is spiritual, also speaks regarding women, and, uh, if I can find it here. I have it written down. One of these versions. I have it written down actually here. If I can find this. This is, is found in Daniel. In, in uh, Daniel 11, 23. So, um, yeah, um, that's the altar, altar of all four corners of the earth, and here it is, yeah, Daniel eleven thirty seven, in 25, in 25, right, uh, and in every, in verse 25, says, also here, in every version, in verse 25 says, In every city of Judah he made high places to burn incense to other gods, 
provoking to anger the Lord, the God of his fathers. So this is also, once again, in Daniel 11.37. You see, in that time, they, this really, I don't think this ever happened there before, at, at this level for sure. But, I mean, this was the end of the end. And, but God wasn't done with the covenant, so it wasn't... But this, this slaughter was just a... It was a symbol. Okay, If you look in Corinthians, it says that these things were written down as examples in uh, 1 Corinthians 10 to 6. Okay? And, uh, and so, that's what, that's what this is. This is an example for us of what's happening today. It is a mirror of what's happening. It's the same thing. And 37 says, He shall give no heed to the gods of his fathers, or to the one beloved by women. He shall not give heed to any other god, for he shall magnify himself above all. Okay, that's the little horn. And so here it is here in verse 25. In every city of Judah he made high places to burn incense to other gods, provoking to anger the Lord, the God of his fathers. So I'm going to stop there. Uh, there's mo much more regarding the uh, Assyrian horn and uh, the horn of Egypt that is very, very, um, very edifying. So I hope you're edified. God bless you. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. And I have written down here somewhere regarding what the Holy Spirit revealed. 2017, 2018, it's, it's just the same as what I've been saying. Um, 2018, 2019. It's, this is... I have never been so anxious before in my entire life. Filled with absolute... Ang um, ang um, just looking to the things that are, that are, that are about to, to, to pass here. There's going to be some extremely earth-shaking events that's going to be happening extremely soon. And I feel in my spirit a sense of liberation. And I feel the Holy Spirit over me right now. We have arrived. This, this is time right now. Whatever we have, we need to give everything to the Lord Jesus Christ. On our knees, on our faces, in prayer, to the Lord, in vision, seeing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in prayer. He's knocking at the door right now. God bless.